All right, everyone, today we have a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro with no backlight. First question we're going to ask ourselves is what is the voltage on backlight output because that's going to give us an idea of what's going on. Working backlight circuit should have around 25 to around 44 volts or so on it. If we have zero volts, we either have an enable issue or short to ground. If we have 55 volts, we probably have a flex gate problem. We go ahead and backlight output on capacitors right here and we see we have zero volts so with zero volts uh, we either have an enable issue or a short to ground let's go ahead and check for a short to ground next first thing we're going to do is unplug power from it we do not want to have power running through the board when we check for a short to ground what a short to ground basically is is electricity is falling short of where it's supposed to go in most cases that is going to be to ground the electricity is going to be passing through a filled component going right to ground and pulling that voltage on that line down so nothing will work we're going to put our multimeter in tone mode or continuity mode, and we are going to check for a short to ground. I should expect to see a pretty high vo a pretty high uh, resistance on this line to ground. It should be well within the kilo ohms. If I have something like 60 ohms or something, it's too low. Let's go ahead and see. So one lead is going to be on ground. One lead is going to be on backlight output. And I have 14, 15 ohms to ground. That is not good. That means we do have a short to ground on backlight output. Now the very next thing I want to do is unplug the screen. Sometimes the screens fail and cause a short to ground on backlight output. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the connector for the screen by unscrewing the two screws and unplugging the connector. And if our short to ground is gone, we know we have a bad screen. Uh, the fuses usually don't blow on this model because the backlight driver is pretty good at uh, sensing if there's a short to ground and putting a stop to um, blowing the fuse and with the screen unplugged we still have 15 ohms to ground so we definitely have a board level fault at this point. Let's go ahead and get this board out and have a look. We have our motherboard out, uh, let's go ahead and put it on the microscope see if there's any visual signs of damage around the backlight circuit. Alright, so our backlight circuit on this board, um, we generally we're going to have some capacitors. Uh, these are our main smoothing capacitors. I'll go ahead and pop up the schematic uh, right here. Uh, just to give you guys a reference here. Um, these guys are usually the culprit when we ever, whenever we see um, shorts to ground. It's usually one of these capacitors that ends up failing and causing um, the issue. All right, these here are all the capacitors in question. C8460, 8463, 8469, all of these in the group. These are basically just our main smoothing capacitors. We have one set on one side of the board and we have another set on the other side of the board. And like I said, usually when we have a short to ground on PPV out SO LCD backlight, it's usually on one of these guys right here. Um, Sometimes, rarely, it'll be further up the line. Uh, sometimes it's a screen, sometimes it's a screen connector, but more often than not, it's one of these guys right here. So, how are we going to find our short to ground? We're going to do some thermal imaging after some voltage injection, and we're going to see what lights up on the thermal imager. Occasionally, you could see signs when one of these capacitors are bad, but that's really not the case here. All these look uh, pristine. There's no cracks or solder balls. Typically, you'll see a nice big crack through one of them. And I really don't see that here. They all look pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, solder a wire um, to any of these. It doesn't really matter. And another, another place we could solder the wire is actually the coil, the actual backlight coil. It's really useful too because sometimes if you solder a wire to your capacitor, um, you're just, you're not short is because sometimes the, um, well, the point of voltage is going to get hot. So if you have... If you're putting more heat right next to the shorted component, it might confuse you to where the short is. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of flux down, get our wire soldered, and then um, go ahead and inject a little bit of voltage. Backlight circuits, we don't really have to be too careful on injecting. Um, it generally takes a lot of power to be able to get them to light up anyway. So we're just going to solder this. Come on. Put a little lead down, make it easier on us. Yeah. Nice up there. And wire is down. Um, we'll start at 11 volts or so. That should be sufficient. And honestly, we could do thermal imaging, but. I could already tell you which capacitor it is, and I'm sure you just saw that as well if you're paying attention. Look at that. Watch the crack here. You can see there's a crack. Now that there's heat going through it, we could actually see that crack expand. It's pretty cool. Watch that. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that amazing to see? Look at that crack. 
It expands and it'll keep expanding until we remove it. That's pretty darn cool if you ask me. Anyway, that's where our problem is. Let's go ahead and get this off the board and let's replace it. So I'm going to grab my hot air gun. 430. At max airflow. Grab a nice pair of tweezers. Our wire just came off. That's fine. We don't need it anymore. That capacitor is off. Get a touch of flux down here. This is NC759 ASX, which is our new Premier Flux. Grab a capacitor off a donor board. Pretty much every uh, Retina MacBook has these capacitors in the backlight circuit. It does not have to come from the same model. Just pick one off any board. Any board 20, um, pretty much 2015 and newer will have these capacitors. Let's get that down there. Beautiful. Want the board to cool off a little bit, then we'll do a little uh, flux cleanup. Allow the board to cool off a little bit. Let's go ahead and clean up some of this flux residue. Just do one pass to get most of it. And we'll come through. There's no need to ultrasonically clean this. Not liquid damage. You only have one component, and we're using a good no clean flux, so it's pretty pointless. I like to just go through a couple times with alcohol and get a lot of it, then I'll come back through and do a more fine job. I like to put alcohol down, then use the dry side to kind of mop it up. But I want to get at least some of it off first. And that's looking pretty good. Like so. Looks pretty much factory. Can't even tell we were really here. Let's go ahead and put it back in the enclosure and see if it works. All right, we have our board set back in the enclosure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what voltage on backlight output is now, um, just to give it a comparison. So before we measured zero volts, and now we have, what do we have? 48... 23. That should be good. So um, typically this rail is dependent on load it's very dependent on load and your brightness settings so if you if you select a lower brightness uh, you'll typically be on the lower side we'll see if we have touch bar controls here yeah we do so here we go we see we have a working backlight i'm going to hit our brightness here that's all the way down so we're at 48 volts now it's pretty dim um, we could just barely see it basically that's what i want and let's measure again What do we have now? 48 again. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but anyway, my point is this line can vary. Um, typically, 25 to 48 or so is good. If we have 55 volts, um, that means we have no load, probably flex gate, screen issue. Um, sometimes when we have 55 volts, if we do a PRM reset, that will uh, resolve it very rarely. So if you have 55 volts, definitely do a PRM reset. Um, but pretty much that's it. Uh, this is fixed. We had a short backlight output, simple capacitor replacement. Good to go. I hope this video helps you in some way if you run into something similar in your shop or if you are an end user that has a backlight problem and went to Apple, the Apple store and they told you you need a new computer, this shows you you really don't. And we could help you out. Thank you so much for watching.